We are going to talk about uh, some of the most popular drums in West Africa. We are here literally surrounded by dozens of drums, including some very interesting drums that are uh, like historical and uh, the type of drum that didn't survive the, the crossing of the Atlantic. But uh, the instruments that are still current today, that we can see today in West African music, some of them uh, I would like to, to, to show this to you, because this is the, the type of music that is more influential into the Afro-Cuban, Afro-Caribbean, or Afro-Brazilian and South American music in general. These are dundums. Hmm? The dundums come in different sizes. You can see that there is the hair of the animal still here on the skin because you want a darker tone, you don't want a very bright tone in those drums. Hmm? They are mostly carved. These in particular are from Ghana, and you can see the, the Ghana flag. The Ghana drums are very uh, commonly decorated with the Ghanaian flag. And what happened with the dundums is they can play alone or they can play in, in packs. Uh, one person can play one dundum or several, or sometimes you have several dundum players playing different drums. They use the, the dundums in this position. Depending on the country, they can use this type of mallets or just straight mallets, but it's very common that they use this type of hook. Um, and uh, I would like to show to you how they use the dundums in a, in a different position as well. And you are going to see videos with uh, real African musicians playing them. It's common too that they play the, the dundums in a horizontal position, uh, just on the ground or in some type of uh, stand. Mm -hmm. Stands are more and more common lately, but uh, the dundums, depending on the region, depending on the tradition in that particular place, could be played, as I told you before, uh, horizontally or uh, standing up or with this type of mallets or straight mallets. The important thing is that the doom doom is going to be always providing the big sound, the, the foundation for the ensembles of uh, West African music. This is the djembe. The djembe is the main drum in West Africa. We find this uh, drum in Nigeria, in uh, Ghana, all over the place in the west coast of Africa. It's carved, as you can see. And it's a very versatile drum because you can produce several tones. You have a very deep tone in the middle. You have a very high pitch here, it's in slap. You can do all type of more. It's a, it's a great drum. And uh, it's very interesting, but this drum didn't survive the crossing of the Atlantic. This drum was, has not been reproduced in the Americas, but uh, many of the music that is played in the Americas with congas, for example, uh, actually uh, is very similar to the way in that they play the, the djembe in the music of West Africa. In the music of West Africa, bells are very important. And we are going to see in Latin American music, in salsa especially, Afro-Cuban music, that uh, cowbells are very important. Because the bells play something that is called a timeline. In African music, in West African music, you don't count one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. You use a pattern. Hmm? Uh, similar to what we call clave in Latin American music, in, in, in salsa and Afro-Caribbean music. Um, I'm going to play the clave, mm, which is something that perhaps you are familiar. That's the Latin American style. Mm. 
Mm? If you recognize that from a salsa record, eh, eh, this is exactly the same thing that happens in West African music. It's organized around a timeline. For example, in all the drums, the dun dun, the djembes, the talking drums that we are going to show in a minute are organized around them. This is a huge West African uh, bell. Mm? We know this as a gogo, mm? but in different countries, in different languages, they use different names. For us, it's normally called a gogo. And uh, I was playing a very type, of, uh, a very common type of uh, um, timeline <laughs> that you may recognize from the movies because it's really common. Everybody uses that one and it's not difficult to play. There are other shapes and, 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 and sizes of uh, bells, of course. This is a modern type of bell, actually very, very similar to the Brazilian uh, bells, so much that it's possible to play samba in these bells. But actually, these are not uh, samba bells. Uh, these are African bells, too. And they are used also to play some type of timeline, as I showed you before. For example, <laughs> of course, there are hundreds or thousands of type of shakeries in maracas, in whatever you want to call it. These are very common African style with, with a gourd and little sea snails. Mm? This is common in all Afro-Latin America. It's common in Brazil, and actually this one comes from Africa. Mm? And then you know the, the type of shekere sound, mm? and that's very present in West African music and in Afro-Latin American music. Also, they use it to do milder textures just like this or hitting like this. Two other type of uh, shakeres or rattles. One that you can hang, mm, make with uh, some fruits. These are actually fruits from a plant that they, they dry and they look like this, mm? the same fruits. This one is something that you can tie, tie around your legs or tie around your waist. Mm? Very nice sounds, very, ni very nice type of textures. Mm? Also, very, it's very common to use this in the beginning of some movies. How many movies you watch that they start like, right? These are uh, some other type of Rattles. This is another type of uh, mini African bell, mm? a type that you is, is, is hollow, and actually you need to produce some type of uh, resonance box with your hands. Mm? another model of the, of the bells mm, from different regions of West Africa. This is another type of drum, very important. Another drum that didn't survive the crossing of the Atlantic. We don't see this type of talking drum in Latin America, but it's very, very important in the ensemble, the percussion ensemble of West Africa. Mm. It's carved. Mm, uh, and has all these strings in this shape for a purpose. And this is because you play this around your arm and you press like this, and with this you're going to change the pitch of the drum.
Normally, the most qualified drummer, which is not my case, plays this drummer, this drum. Uh, you start playing dum dum, then you move to djembe, and finally, the master. When you are a master, you are able to play the talking drum. And this is the mysterious and mythological West African talking drum. This is a very important drum, and this is a type of drum that did survive the crossing of the Atlantic. In West Africa, it's called bata, and it's a sacred drum. It's a drum used in the rituals of the Yoruba religion, for example. And it's a double-sided drum. In the original shape, it's only wood carved from a tree and uh, leather and tied also with uh, leather, with raw leather. And you play with one hand in one side and the other in the other. For example. And uh, in Cuba, especially, the slaves were able to reproduce this type of drum. And this type of drum is uh, nowadays also very important in the rituals of Santeria and Abacua and all the types of uh, Afro-Cuban religions. Mm? Millions of people are uh, followers of the Afro-Cuban religions, and these drums are still in use for that. Not just this type of drum, this is the old style, but also the newer style, which is this one, that instead of having uh, rope or leather and tie with that. In this case, they put screws. There are even very, very sophisticated, standard, uh, factory produced uh, Latin percussion or other brands, uh, toca, uh, bata, mm -hmm. that look really, really fancy. I like a lot this one. And this is uh, a very, very traditional style of newer bata. In, in, in Cuban ritual music. And then both are varieties of the traditional bata drum, old style, African style, more modern Cuban style. 